Cross-origin resource sharing, or CORS, is a mechanism that uses additional HTTP headers to inform browsers whether to allow an application running at one origin to access selected resources from a server at a different origin. By default, for security, web browsers prevent web pages from making requests to a different domain other than the one that the page came from. This is known as same origin policy, but CORS allows developers to work around this restriction when necessary. We're going to break down CORS and run through some examples to better understand the impact of using it or not using it. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's dive in. Before we can really understand CORS, we need to understand what is an origin exactly? Well, there are three things that make up an origin, the scheme, the host name, and the port number. Next up, we have cores headers. Now, don't worry if you don't remember the details of all the headers right off the bat. We're going to run through some practical examples afterwards, and at least for me, that helps things stick a little bit better. First up, we have the access control allow origin header. This specifies authorized domains to make a cross origin request. It can either be a wildcard with an asterisk, or it can be a specific domain. For example, http colon slash slash cause-a.com and a port number if it's not inferred from the scheme as well. Next is the access control allow methods header. And just as it sounds, this header specifies the method or methods allowed when accessing a resource. And of course, this could be things like get, post, put, delete, etc. And finally, we have the access control allow headers header, which is used in a response to a pre-flight request to indicate which HTTP headers can be used during the actual request. What is a pre-flight request? Just send the request. A pre-flight request is a preliminary network request sent by the browser to check whether it's safe to send the actual intended request. The pre-flight request uses the options method and a typical request and response would look like this. If the server allows the request, the browser will then send the actual request and if not, the browser will block the request and the error will be logged in the console. Let's take a look at a quick demo application to see this happening. So I've set up three web services and the first is a simple Node.js application, so if I cat server.js, and this is using the cause middleware. So as you can see, we're setting the origin here. So we're allowing cause-a.com on port 8080 we're allowing get and put methods and we're allowing some custom headers as well. Now the Node.js application is running at cores.com and the two endpoints that I have, of course, I've just hard coded some responses. Obviously you'd have your application logic here, but just for demo purposes, this should do fine. Now for the other two services, if we just come back to HTTP server, we have cores A and cores malicious. So if I CD into cores A, and just cat index.html, you can see that we have a couple of buttons. So one sends a get request and one sends a put request. And here is the JavaScript just to send those requests using the fetch API. And you can see we're calling out to cores.com slash accounts and we're setting the method and header. So this is a complex request, which will send a pre-flight request. And this one is just a simple get request. And our third service is exactly the same, except for it's running on cores-malicious.com instead of cores-a. So the difference being is hopefully that we won't be able to send requests from the cores-malicious.com and we will be able to send requests and receive responses from cores-a.com. So let's take a look. I'm just going to spin these up and we'll just come over to our browser and I'm just going to go http colon slash slash www.cores-a.com and this one is running on 8080. And the same for cores-malicious, but this one's running on 8081. So let's open up the network panel, come here, come into network, and we'll just reload quickly so we can see what's happening. And then we just send a get request, and you can see that we get the response, username, Alex, address, 123, somewhere, as expected. Click OK. And next we'll send a complex request. So we update accounts and we get accounts updated. And here you can see the initial request that was sent for our get accounts info. And here you can see the pre-flight request of options and the put request following a successful pre-flight. 
So let's try the same thing with Cause Malicious and we'll do the same again. So we'll pull up the network tab, hit reload, and then try and get the account information. And you can see that we actually get a network error. So network error when attempting to fetch resource and then we'll just click OK and we'll try the other request. Once again, we get network error when trying to attempt to fetch resource. And you can see the error messages here. So cause allow origin not matching origin. The origin here is http colon slash slash www.cause-malicious.com colon 8081. And this is different to our web server. So if we come back and just cat dot dot slash server.js again, obviously difference to this origin here. So with that out of the way, let's see if we can solve a cause lab and retrieve an administrator's API key. All right, so let's take a quick look at this lab. So the first thing I think we're going to do is log into our account. So we'll just come to here and we're given the credentials Vina and Peter. And here we can see we have this API key and the objective of this lab is to extract the API key, but not for our user accounts, but for the administrator user accounts. So let's take a look at the traffic and see what's happening on the site. And we see this account details endpoints. And if I just pull it up, close this. And if we look at the response, we can come over here and we can actually see one of the headers that we talked about earlier. So the access control allow credentials header. And this is an indication that the application is using cause because this is a cause header. So let's test this. Let's try and send a origin. So I'm just going to press control R to send this to repeater. And then just underneath the user agents, I'm going to go origin. And I think I will just put below there and see what happens. We can send this and we can take a look at the response. And you can see that we do indeed have the access control allow origin hello there. So here the application is actually trusting all origins since it's simply reflecting the origin back into the access control allow origin header. So let's craft an exploit for this. And I have one prepared already. So I will just come to the burp suite exploit server so that we can deliver it to the victim. And I'm going to paste it in, but I'll explain it line by line. I just come down to the body paste this. And what's happening here is we're actually creating a new XML HTTP request object and we're assigning it to the variable request. The onrec.load equals request listener, the second line here, sets up an events listener on the XML HTTP request object and the onload events would trigger on a successful request and it will call the function, which is here. Yeah. Rec.open initializes the request and rec.withcredentials equals true ensures that cookies are sent. And then rec.send actually sends the request. Our listener function changes the location of the current page and navigates to slash log and then also passes in the response text. And hopefully this will be the API key of the administrator. Once this is delivered, we can then view the access log and steal the API key. So let's store this. And I just realized I made a little bit of a mistake. I missed out the S in HTTPS. This lab is using HTTPS. So I'm going to re-deliver this to the victim, come to the access log, and here we have slash log, and you can see the API key here, which we will just grab. And I think we can grab this whole line, come back to burp suites, come to decoder, decode as URL. And here we have the actual key. Just copy this, come back to submit solution, paste the API key in and click OK and we've solved the lab. So that's it for today's video. Now, of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And there are plenty more labs as well on Portswigger Academy if you want to dig deeper. I'll see you next time.